Hey guys, I'm Austin Smith and welcome to Focus on Species. Today we're going to be talking about an incredibly unique animal called the thylacine. Believed to have gone extinct in 1936, the thylacine was a large carnivorous marsupial native to Australia. It is also commonly known as a Tasmanian tiger because of its distinctive stripes or as a Tasmanian wolf because of its resemblance to canines through convergent evolution. Originally found on the island of New Guinea, continental Australia, and the island of Tasmania, the thylacine appears in ancient aboriginal rock art. By the time Europeans began to settle on the continent in the late 18th century, however, the thylacine had gone completely extinct in New Guinea, and nearly extinct on the Australian mainland, almost certainly due to aboriginal hunting practices. The surviving population of thylacine inhabited the island of Tasmania, along with several other endemic species there, including the Tasmanian Devil. The first definitive encounter between a European and a thylacine occurred in 1792, but it was not until the early 19th century when the first detailed descriptions of the animal were produced. In 1803, the British began settlement of Tasmania, and five years later, in 1808, the first known illustration of a thylacine was published. Numerous representations were produced during the early 19th century, like this painting from 1817, but they remained inaccurate in many ways. Eventually, more accurate illustrations began to be produced, like this one from 1861. Similar in appearance to a large, short-haired dog, the thylacine had a long, stiff tail that extended from its body much like that of a kangaroo. Its color varied from light to dark brown, with 13 to 21 dark stripes across its back. The lifespan of the thylacine was anywhere between 5 to 9 years. Females had a pouch, like other marsupials, where they would carry their young pups. In this 1898 photograph of thylacines at the Adelaide Zoo, the female in front can be seen bearing pups in her distended pouch. The animal's jaws had the unusual ability to extend open up to 120 degrees and were filled with sharp teeth for eating prey like wallabies, wombats, and birds. The thylacine was also able to balance on its hind legs, standing upright and performing a bipedal hop, much like a kangaroo, for brief periods of time. The thylacine inhabited the woodlands and coastal scrubland of Tasmania. It was generally noted to be a shy and secretive creature, a nocturnal hunter, and usually avoided contact with humans. As British settlement of Tasmania increased during the 19th century, the thylacine began to be associated with numerous attacks on sheep and later poultry. This 1823 sketch shows a trap that could be used to lure and capture thylacines. A bounty was created in an attempt to reduce thylacine numbers as early as 1830. This 1869 photograph shows a hunter with his trophy. Relentless targeting by ranchers and bounty hunters continued, causing the species population to plummet. Between 1888 and 1909, the Tasmanian government paid one pound per dead adult thylacine and ten shillings for a dead pup. Thousands of the animals were killed during this period. In 1921, a photograph of a thylacine with a chicken in its mouth helped to further the animal's reputation as a poultry killer. Modern research shows that the animal in the photograph was most likely a taxidermy specimen posed specifically for the portrait. During the early 20th century, as thylacine numbers declined, a number of the animals were kept in zoos in Australia, Europe, and the United States, such as this bear at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., photographed in about 1903. Photographs, as well as a small number of motion picture films of these captive animals, offer some of the most interesting images of the now presumed extinct creature. In fact, there are no extant photographs of a living thylacine in the wild. Eventually, trapping for zoos, changes to the natural environment of Tasmania, 
competition for prey from introduced species such as dogs and foxes, disease, and continued bounty hunting decimated thylacine numbers until the population became unsustainable. One of the last known wild thylacines was killed in Tasmania in 1930, photographed here with the farmer who shot the animal, along with his seemingly frightened dog. The very last known wild individual was killed in 1933, found dead in a snare. The last captive thylacine was held by the zoo in Hobart, Tasmania, until September 7, 1936, when the animal died most likely due to neglect. Since then, several searches have been undertaken in attempts to discover surviving populations of the thylacine in Tasmania, but with no convincing results that any survive. Despite this, thousands of sightings of thylacine in Tasmania, as well as in parts of mainland Australia, continue to be reported into the 21st century. While no conclusive evidence has been brought forward for the species' continued existence, there is enough information to suggest that the thylacine may still survive. During the first decade of the 21st century, cloning a thylacine from a preserved specimen had been discussed. It is now known, however, that the absence of a suitable surrogate species and the inability to extract the full genome of a thylacine from the DNA of a museum specimen renders cloning of the animal almost certainly an impossibility. In 2005, the compilation of the International Thylacine Specimen Database was completed. This project has endeavored to catalog and digitally photograph all known surviving preserved material of thylacines held by museums, universities, and private collections around the world. The database includes skins, skeletons, skulls, and taxidermy mounts, as well as four adults and ten pups preserved in alcohol. A resource like this stimulates further research about the thylacine and allows us to more thoroughly understand this fascinating marsupial. Today, many Australians believe the thylacine may still survive in remote regions of Tasmania, or even the continent, and new alleged sightings continue to encourage these hopes. Regardless of this, the memory of the thylacine remains an important part of Australian culture. Tasmania's coat of arms features two of the animals, and the thylacine continues to appear in popular references. The Australian beer, Cascade Premium Lager, even uses images of a thylacine on its bottles and packaging. Ultimately, the story of the thylacine should remind us of how critical it is to manage the world's endangered animals, providing us an example of how easily a species can be brought to extinction. If you'd like to learn more about the thylacine, I encourage you to take a look at some of the books and websites I've listed below. One of the most thoroughly researched resources on the species is an online exhibit titled The Thylacine Museum by natural historian Cameron Campbell. The Thylacine Museum includes a vast amount of information, historic photographs, illustrations, and all the extant film footage known to exist of the animals. He also discusses a lot of the alleged sightings that have occurred since the animal presumably went extinct. I hope you join me again in discovering the rich diversity of our world on the next episode of Focused on Species. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to let me know by liking the video or leaving a comment below. Questions are welcome as well. Also, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and checking out some of my other series such as Wanderlust, where I explore our amazing world and adventures to incredible locations. Thanks for watching.